Good morning, folks. Major shifts in the track of Tropical Storm Alberto. The Earth-facing solar quiet has clamped down. We've got earthquake and climate news to hit as well, but we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Like an angry parent at 3 a.m. in a sleepover, someone came downstairs and spoiled the sunspot party. Quiet conditions prevail on the disk as the kids aren't being loud anymore. Solar flaring is back to nothing, and most have either hidden under the rug or snapped shut and cowered down silently, like the still visible but silent and decaying northern spot. Solar wind has returned to ambient quiet levels. All geomagnetic conditions are calm as well. And so we look forward to the impact from the northern departing coronal hole. It may be too far north, but if not, that impact should be today or tonight. Next one is incoming to begin magnetic connections to Earth as early as tonight. Here's the Euro model showing an eastward forecast now for Alberto. No more direct hit for Mobile, Alabama, now squarely on the Florida panhandle with Georgia in the east coast taking the worst of it. And GFS shows the same. This storm is not heading at the previous pathways forecasted, and instead is creeping slightly eastward in its effects. That is good news for Mississippi and Louisiana. Speaking of tropical activity, as you know, the second cyclone struck the northwest Indian Ocean in about a week. This is what it looked like in Yemen and Oman. By the way, this waterfall can become a trickle in monsoon season, which starts next month. What's happened here is almost unthinkable. The ocean stayed the night, by the way, in many of the coastal communities, and some a bit further from the coast as well. Up next, we are hoping for a preposterously misguided oar fish that got lost. These Vietnamese fishermen knew what it was and how rare it is, but... One wonders if they know how many times these have preceded the occurrence of large earthquakes in the greater region. I've also included an abstract link from a Penn State team discussing the electric workings of earthquake lights. And it includes a key principle in our impetus for electric investigation. The quake itself does not seem to have the energy to do the work. There's something else they're missing. And it is our contention that not all the current is from stressed rock, but from the global electric circuit and geomagnetic systems as well. Lastly, folks, top statistics level analysis, many ways, of carbon dioxide and solar activity as it relates to global temperatures. Now, using a number of mainstream assumptions, solar forcing has still jumped up to 35% over the last 30 years, compared to the 90% blame CO2 currently gets according to your children's teachers. Now this is after one has to imply Keene's clear skies proof to be another 20-40% to 40 of the equation. Now the rest of the battle is between oceans decadal cycles and human pollution, and regardless of how they split the difference, we're talking about a situation where if all those assumptions are made, which restrict the solar forcing to a degree that may be too much, together with the volcanoes, it's well over half the discussion. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Website members, we've got another how close we came situation to describe. Deeper look coming today describing where we are in the research process as of now. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.